I want to transform the inside of my messy and cluttered garage but stick into as tight a budget as possible. So in this video I'm going to show you how I achieved it, what features I've got in the garage now and also how much it cost me. Hey, I'm Kevin, this is North Coast Workshop where you'll find content on car modification and DIY. Today's video is not actually featuring the Cupra, I'm afraid it's stuck outside in the dark just now in the rain, but it's featuring basically the backdrop to most of my videos on YouTube so far, which has been my cluttered and messy garage. But hopefully as you can see in the background, it's a bit more modern now, a bit less cluttered and a lot better for storage for myself and also for lighting, hopefully it seems a lot brighter in here as well. And the main point of this video is basically to run through all the stuff I've done, all the things I've fitted to the garage itself and also the money it's cost me. So let's get straight into the video and let's get started off with decluttering the garage and getting ready for painting and putting the floor in. So first of all, what I've got here in the corner is an air compressor and also I've bought this hose reel recently. So it's a 10 meter hose reel and it's retractable. It stops and then after a few attempts, it goes back in again itself as well. So I can take the hose reel when the garage door is open out onto the driveway and blast out any water out of tail lights, etc. down the sides of doors. When you're washing cars, there's always water lying around and it's a pain when you want to dry the car and then water runs out later on. Then I've got up here is my bike rack. Now, sadly, I haven't got space to actually put my bike somewhere else. I have got a shed out at the back of this garage, but it's not big enough to take the bike and Millie's bike up there as well. So yes, yeah, sadly, I do have to kind of clutter the space with a bike on the wall, but it's the best way to get it off the ground and up out the way so it's not going to cause any obstruction when I'm opening car doors along the side here. Under the shelf, I forgot to say, I've got the attachments for the air compressor as well. So if I do want to blow up any tires, I've got a pressure gauge there as well and also a spray gun, but I don't think I ever use that with the size of compressor that's there. The pumpkin is nearly Halloween, so that's why there's a pumpkin in my garage. It won't be here long term, especially if it starts to go... Well, it already is going mouldy. Okay, that's not a good sign, but that will be gone. Wash buckets on the wall, just on hooks. Then I've got my five cupboards up here. Now I used to have the cupboards in the old setup as in two rows, a top row and a bottom row, but the bottom row was getting in the way. Again, we're opening car doors. I decided to stack them along the top as high as possible, but then also leaving just enough space on the top to get these detailing products in as well. So these five liter bottles, just enough space between the rafters and tops of the cupboards to get these bottles in place. I won't really go into my cupboards too much because they are still kind of cluttered and unorganized. And you can see the insides again, they haven't been painted, 
this is original colour on the inside here, but I just didn't see the point in painting every single surface with this colour. It would cost a lot for paint and it's something you'd never really see anyway. Then I've got space down here for hanging any damp uh, rags or cloths or drying towels. Also mustn't forget a very nice metal sign, kind of rustic looking for set Leon parking. My good friend Ral gave me this really nice gift. Then we've got my tool chest here. So it's on wheels, so it can move from this position, but this is where it stays normally, just dead center of this wee alcove space between the cupboards. And it should also, it's got an automatic light. So this only comes on obviously when you come over to it and this just helps if it is slightly darker to see in all the drawers and the case as well, which is actually a random mess. So we won't look in there too closely. And down the side here as well, I managed to get this white vent. So this just basically covers an alcove. I put a picture on screen just now. It was just an air vent that actually goes straight outside, but it was recessed into the wall, kind of filled with cobwebs, dirty. I wasn't going to put paint on that part of the wall. So I just thought I'd buy this cheap plastic vent on top and it seems to cover up really nicely. Now for the main part of the storage and the kitchen units itself that I painted. So in this cupboard here, these two parts of the cupboard are joined together. I've still to paint that insert in there and as you can see that part of the shelf there as well. So these are painted with grey so you don't see them as much. But what I'm going to do is pop a freezer in this top part as well. So there'll be a freezer going in the top of the cupboard and then the thumb dryer will just be on show continually. Up at the top there we've got my wee camera, so this is linked to the Wi-Fi, so this constantly monitors the inside of the garage, day or night, if it's light in here or dark in here, it's got night vision, so there's a record image across the whole of the garage. <laughs> And this just means that if I need to check on the guard or if I need to set this to motion sensing mode, so basically any motion in the guard, it starts recording straight away and informs me on my phone. Then we've got these cupboards here. So I'll just give a quick peek in this cupboard here. It is a riot, an absolute mess. You can see a bunch of wires. This basically is controlling all the smart tech that's on this end of the garage. There's various sockets in there. You might see these ones here, this large socket that's then plugged into the plug itself. And that's just a smart socket basically controlling on and off for things via my phone or through routines through Alexa, which I'll explain later on. And yes, the Modern Warfare campaign is just early access today. So I've just about got that started. I haven't had a chance to play it yet because I need to film this video. But this is basically my wee PlayStation setup. I think I might get a chair, proper gaming chair that I can set here, put my feet up and play on the monitor here. I wanted a separate monitor from the TV that I could just use purely for gaming. Now, I am planning, hopefully, to get a PS5 at some point, and then the PS4 will come out here and live in this cupboard permanently, where it is just now. So you might notice now, there is a TV on the wall, dead center of the garage, taking pride of place, 43 inches. It fits perfectly in this gap. Now, I did have this gap that I knew would be on the wall when I finished off putting the wall cabinets on, but I wasn't too sure what I was doing with it. Then I managed to put a backing plate of, of wood, basically, and run wires down the back of the plate that would then feed the power and other signals to this TV. So smart TV, yet 43 inches, and it did fit perfectly. You can see the gap here, either side and top and bottom as well. So I always like to watch YouTube and Twitch basically when I'm out here in the garage working on cars. So it's really useful for me to have a TV this size that I can see easily wherever I am in the car. And also the sound of it is really good as well. It's quite impressive for a TV to have such good sound. And you might have caught a glimpse of the different flavours of Sneak that I've got up there. And I've got some down here as well. I must say this one so far, this breakfast orange is my favourite one so far. Uh, I don't know if anyone else drinks Sneak. If you do, let me know in the comments. But I just find it as it might be a kind of reasonably healthy way to have caffeine. And something that tastes nice at the same time without having these cans of Monster and Red Bull like that I usually used to drink. I've also got the t-shirt as well. And yeah, Sneak, if you are watching and you want to sponsor a ginger guy who mucks about with cars in the garage, then uh, yeah, let me know. Uh, drop me a comment below. Now I've also got this really clever wee thing that I did. So it's basically a power cube, which is useful as it is. And it would have just been sitting on the desk like this. And that would be it. And the cable would be hanging there. It does my USB. It's got my USB-C. It's got a few normal 240 volt sockets as well. But what I thought would be quite clever would be put a magnetic base on it 
and a metal base on the bottom of the cupboards there and then at, once I'm done with it basically I can just wrap it up and stick it I can't do it with one hand just now but stick it back onto its magnetic base and it would stay up there with the cable wrapped around and it's out of the way and it keeps the surface nice and clear of course what you need in a garage is some good quality tunes and this thing is excellent really really good I'm so surprised by the sound that comes out of this thing it's not exactly that big but the bass it produces and the quality of sound is amazing. It's an Amazon Echo Studio. It basically is their top of the range speaker. It's like a Sonos speaker, but it's Amazon's version. And I can't recommend this thing enough. There is a lot of comparisons on YouTube and they do kind of say it's down to your personal preference, whether you prefer this or a Sonos speaker. But from my first experience of this thing, it is amazing. The way it sounds in the garage, it can actually sound, sound around the garage. So you think when you're standing over there, you can hear the sound around behind you even though the speaker is sat there over in the corner. If anyone else has got one, let me know what you think. But yeah, I'm really impressed with this thing so far. If this has caught your eye in the background, it's basically just a picture of a donut from my daughter, Millie, and it's taken pride of place on the wall. I don't know if it will stay there the whole time, but there's nothing else there just now. So I'm quite happy to put this blue and pink donut on the wall. It could be a ship, actually. Is that a boat? Maybe it's a boat and a sail. Ah, I thought it was a donut. And these new blinds just basically tie in pretty well with the guards with the colour theme. So we've got grey blinds and obviously we've got the grey units and the grey square around on the floor. That's not a square actually, that's a rectangle. Sorry, that's my bad. So while editing this video, I've noticed two things. One thing is my bald spot looks horrendous on camera. And the second thing is I've not properly mentioned the Duramat flooring that I've put in place in the garage. Now, it has transformed the look of the garage massively. If I'd left a standard concrete floor in that had paint stains and oil stains from over the years on it, I think it would have spoiled the overall look of the garage and not had it looking as fresh and as new as it does now. So the flooring is from a company called Duramat and I opted for two different colours in mine to make a grey rectangle and then the rest is black. And I think all in, including the delivery for this as well, it was 650 quid to my door. Really easy to maintain. It's suitable for use in garages, so it can have a car on it, axle stands and a jack and not have any imprints left in it afterwards. And you can easily wipe it clean, you can wash it clean as well, and it's really hard wearing. So yeah, definitely a good addition to the garage, an expensive one, but I think if I just left it as standard, the garage wouldn't have looked as good as it does now. Anyway, back to the video. Pretty empty wall just now. I am possibly going to do some sort of mini bar here. I was planning a mini bar in the previous setup in this garage before I decorated it. So I do still want to have optics, uh, mirrored backings to them and fancy LED lights and stuff as well. So this is an ideal space here that hasn't been used just now, but I need to figure out a way of keeping it flat against that wall so it doesn't take up any floor space and doesn't encroach into any working space when I'm working on cars. We've got the door with our CCTV sticker on the outside to make sure people realise this place is under constant surveillance now. The door is locked, but it's obviously to put people off that if they break that door, or break that window, these cameras or motion sensors, there's a motion sensor up there as well, are going to pick up them coming in and basically have the footage fed to me straight away. Also, what helps is the lights come on straight away as well, so there's no hiding in the dark in this place. As soon as that door is opened, these lights will come on. Now, finally here in the corner, we've basically got my detailing area for all the, basically, the holes, pressure washer and the attachments for the pressure washer as well for the lance. Also, my outdoor gear for extension cord and grass trimmer and also the window washing brush as well. And it basically keeps it off the ground again. So I've got these hooks on the wall to keep the pressure washer off the ground, clear the floor space clear. The bucket is there just now because this hose tends to leak after I've used it. So it just drips away gradually. This floor doesn't have any issues basically with having water on it. The seals in between each tile are really, really tight. When you click it in together, it's a really tight fit, but water might go through the odd bit here and there. So my idea is if I can avoid it, not to have water constantly dropping on the floor. And this mess of wires up here in the corner is basically the hub for the control of the smart tech in here again which i'll go through in a second but this is a mesh wi-fi router so this basically is getting a signal beamed from out at the house it's sending a signal across here wirelessly to this and then i'm plugging in the tv from here and the cables running up along there and into the back of the telly at the back of the room. So, so that's really good for picking up a good strong signal, which I can then use on my smart TV, and then I can get good reliable connections. Now I've also got some under cabinet lights there, the LED ones, which are red, and my mistake when I was fitting them, I just ran a bit of wire to join together. So these two parts are joined together, but I should have actually just continued the red lights the whole way under the TV and back here. So I have got a new set that I'm gonna replace them with, and then run it continuously along the bottom of there and around the bottom of this cupboard as well. Now you can see 
these ones as well, I managed to damage the connection up there and that's why the rest of the cable for the LEDs is actually not on. And if you're wondering as well, these are basically just stick on tiles. So they've got a 3D effect to them. I don't know if you can see the edge to them, the kind of 3D edge. You just cut them to size, um, mount them on the wall, make sure the surface is nice flat. And then because these are jagged, they have bits missing at the end of them. You can then just slot the next one in side by side and it kind of hides any seams or joins along the way. So I think it's kind of, it's not as good as tiles, but it's a surface at the back of the worktop here that is basically splash resistant and any dirt that goes on here will just wipe off straight away and makes it look a bit more modern at the back of the garage rather than having the plain breeze bolt walls that have been painted white. So with the help of some smart tech that I've installed in the garage since I've done it up, it's also helped automate a lot of things in here. So basically in the morning before seven o'clock or at night after five o'clock, if I come in the door over there, there's a motion sensor that will pick up the movement when I come in and it'll turn the lights on automatically in here. So it's quite handy if I've got my hands full and it is pitch black inside here, then I don't have to start putting my stuff down and reaching for a light switch. Motion sensor is also used as well for detecting no movement in here. So if there's no movement inside the garage for five minutes, the detector will tell Alexa to tell her to turn the lights off in the garage. We can now also ask Alexa to open the garage door. So if I say Alexa, open the garage door, then she should. And then if I say to her as well, Alexa, close the garage door, then she should close the garage door. And that's all down to this wee switch up here that is pushing the button whenever I tell Alexa to do something. And when it comes to the garage door being open, there is a double socket on the driveway now that I've installed that is a smart socket. So basically it only powers up the smart socket when the garage door is open. So it means that if I'm out in the drive, I use it for my Hoover. I said don't disturb you. I've been in my car. And also use it for the pressure washer as well. And it only powers up when the garage door is open, obviously when I'm using the garage anyway. So this also means that any sneaky person that wants to try and borrow some electricity from that socket, it's absolutely useless because it's completely powered off until that garage door is reopened. Another thing I can do with Alexa is tell her to control the floor lighting that I fit. Now the floor lighting is really handy for working on cars, whether it comes to detailing or if I have the car jacked up on one side, the floor lighting basically illuminates the side of the car. So Alexa, turn on the floor lighting. And Alexa, can you turn off the floor lighting? Again, very useful. So if I'm lying under a car and I'm needing an extra bit of light and they haven't been turned on, I haven't got to get it from under the car and go up and push a switch. I can just shout to herself in the corner there and she can take care of it. So as well, I've got Alexa controlling the television as well. So if I'm leaving the garage at night, I can't find the control for some reason and I want the TV turned off rather than having to go and unplug it completely. I can just say, Turn off the TV. And she will power down the television as well. Now, basically what I have here is I've got these four multifunction switches. So what you can do is you can program them to certain routines. So when you push the button one, that will then trigger turning all the lights in here off in one go, or it could be turning all the lights on in one go, maybe activating certain ones and turning other ones off or if you want a certain color of light, it would then activate that as well. So these can be programmed individually, again, to the routines in the Alexa app. So with the tumble dryer being out here in the garage, the problem is that once it's finished a cycle, we tend not to know it's done its cycle and finished. So we might set it for an hour to heat up some clothes. And then once it's finished, what it does after 50 minutes or so, it will spin again for five minutes and again, put more heat back into them. Just to keep them fresh, understand the reason behind it but it uses a lot of extra power. So what I've done is I've put a smart socket on the back of the power cable for this tumble dryer. What I can do is tell Alexa to power off that power socket after 60 minutes. And this means this has no longer any power to it at all. And it's completely shut off. The clothes aren't getting any more excessive heat. And also I'm not using any more power power in the tumble dryer for no reason. So I did briefly mention this smart switch earlier on. So what this basically is, is there's no on and off properly. It's just a tap to activate it and it springs back to position again. You can see the indicator lights there to see which one is on and which one's off. But one is for the outside security light on the outside of the garage here, and one is for the inside lights here. So this is really handy because it's a smart switch as well. It's got a Wi-Fi signal that sends to the mesh Wi-Fi router here and also talks to the house. And basically I can control the lights inside here 
not just for this, but other lights in here as well, through Wi-Fi. So wherever I am, I can check on the status of the garage, make sure the lights are off. I'm not using excessive power for no reason. And that also these lights will be part of an automation system. So with the motion sensors or the motion sensors on the cameras as well, it all ties in together and they can all work together basically to keep the garage as secure as possible if I'm not here. So I forgot to say as well, I have got a ring doorbell on the front door of my house. And this basically means that once it's set up correctly, because I've still to do it just now, but once it's set up properly, this TV here will show a live feed from the front door, from the ring doorbell, when someone pushes a button. So maybe I'm stuck under a car and I'm not aware someone's at the door, then that TV will show a live feed and I'll know, it will let me know that someone's at the front door. And then I can actually look at the TV and see whether it's someone I actually want to speak to or I can just let them walk away themselves. A really handy feature to have and I need to get it set up as soon as possible on that television. So other few things I've got to do, uh, turn on the floor lights. That seems to make so much difference to the brightness in here. A few things I've got to do is the lights down here, as you can see, is a wee short bit sticking out. So this is the channels that have the LED strips in them and it's stuck out past the end of the shelf. So I need to kind of manufacture a part of a shelf here and then paint it and then add the same vinyl on top that I've got on here and on the worktop. Also, there's a kickboard, which you might have noticed part of the video so far. There's a kickboard, it's got a gap in it under there. So I need to get that fixed. I'm just gonna plan on manufacturing a, basically a new kickboard and painting it and then fitting the light to that instead. I've also got painting to finish off in certain areas, so just with this touch up and also things like that. So the hole there needs filled in and then painted a grey gloss on top as well. So something I'd like to do if I had the time and money hopefully is that I'd like to actually properly put a ceiling on the garage. So a white plasterboard ceiling across the whole of the garage and then maybe have an access hatch. So I'd have to clear a lot of the crap up there, get rid of it, sort it out and just purely have stuff up there that I need to keep and then have an access hatch that can then go up and walk around up top just to grab things. But then the majority of it is all plasterboard and that means it's all hidden from view and it also makes the garage feel a lot brighter as well. So now to finally break down the cost of this garage and see how much exactly it sent me back for getting it to this level it's at just now. So first up we have the Duramat flooring and that was costing 650 pounds. Then the units was a second-hand kitchen from my dad, so that was absolutely free. Then paint for the walls and for the cupboards came in a total of £110. Then we had the vinyl wrap for the top of the worktop, so that was £28. Then we had the adhesive tiles for the backsplash, that was £90. Then the door handles which were replaced with these new square style ones for £28. And the total for all the lighting products, so that's the channels, the actual LED lights and the under cabinet lights was £200. The LG Smart TV was £350. All the smart tech itself, so the plugs, the cameras, the sensors, that was a total of £340. And the Echo Studio speaker was £190. And then the air compressor and the hose reel was a total of £158. And finally, to make sure all the smart tech works in the garage, we've got this Wi-Fi mesh kit for £67. Bringing it up to a grand total of £2,211 for the full build on the garage. Yeah, I hope the wife isn't watching this. If you want to see the last video I did in the old garage before I did the revamp, it was a suspension video I did. I did two videos front and back for my Leon Cupra. So click this video up here in the corner to watch that. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the videos as always. Hit subscribe down below if you want to catch more videos from the channel in future. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers.